Tony Margiata coming at you live in the historical city of Taurasi in the Campania region of Italy. It was once a prehistoric settlement, then a Roman military conquest, and finally a medieval city. Not much has changed since then, but it was the Romans about 2100 years ago that discovered how special the terrain was in this area for winemaking. They called it Optima Vigne, or optimum vines. The wines that came from them were so extraordinary they would become the emperor's preferred wine. So let's explore together uh, the emperor's wines in Taurasi. I'm Tony Margiata and you're watching Italy's best kept wine secrets. Taurasi finds itself about 50 miles east of the metropolitan city of Naples in the Campania region of Italy. The name Taurasi originates from the Latin word Taurus, which means bull. The bull was a mythical animal leader of the Samnite Taurasini tribe, whose settlements in the area go back far before ancient Roman times, between 2,000 and 4,000 years ago. It was known during ancient Roman times as Taurasia. The Romans conquered Taurasi in the year 268 BC. What's interesting is that during the reign of Emperor Augustus in 42 BC, Taurasi and its surrounding lands were given to his second wife, the Empress Livia Drusilla. It was during this period that the Hellenic vine spreads. Livia was apparently an avid wine lover and pushed to increase wine production in this area. That's why the Roman historian Tito Livio called them Ottima Vigne, or Optimum Vines. And it's important to note that Emperor Augustus spent the remainder of his life in this region. So what was the Hellenic vine? The word Hellenic refers to the Greeks who were the most advanced winemakers of the ancient world. So Hellenic literally means Greek. In those days, the vine they grew in Taurasi was called Hellenico, but today it's called Ionico, known as the Greek grape. The Ionico wines from this area were so good that the Roman Empire exported them to neighboring provinces. The Appian Way was a long road built by ancient Romans that connected Rome with southern Italy. When you look at the path it took and the connections it made, it's no wonder that Ionico vines can be found throughout southern Italy today. But Taurasi is the capital of the kingdom of Ionico, home of the Cru terrains for the most age-worthy grape varietal in all of southern Italy. I went to visit Raffaele Inglese, owner and artisan winemaker of Antico Borgo, a micro winery in Taurasi. And I began our visit at a centuries old vineyard in Taurasi. They call it a vine museum because it's a rare occasion to walk in a vineyard with vines ranging from 100 years to this one in the center of the vineyard that is over 250 years old. 
you might notice that the vines don't look anything like the typical vines you'll see on a wine tour in Napa Valley or Tuscany. These vines are called Piede Franco. Allora, Raffaele, spiegami un allora, po'. Allora, questa qui è stata datata um, circa 15 anni fa, 250 anni. Datata da un professore di scienze dell'Università di Milano che ha fatto un'indagine qui in zona. E si ritiene che sia il ceppo più longevo del mondo. Mm. Difatti, è una struttura, sembra, è un museo, diciamo. Questa è una pianta che non esiste in nessuna parte del mondo. And they are basically pre phylloxera vines that survived the devastating viral epidemic that destroyed most of the vines in Europe. These are the original vines that survived. You can see they have grown above head level like trees, once again adding a rare character to this vineyard museum. While these vines do not produce quality wines today, it's important to appreciate the long history of winemaking in Taurasi. While old vines are known to produce quality grapes for winemaking, there are other factors at play to making fine wine. This is the organic. Here's a... This is the organic, it's different. It's a maturation respect to that one. Here's a couple of clusters of ionic. We are still, let's say, 45, 50 days before the maturation. We are still in the third decade, the third decade of October, and the first decade of November. Our next stop was visiting an Ayanico vineyard at high elevation, which is one of the secrets to superior quality Ayanico. We walked on Taurasi's towering hills of vineyards that fly around 1,200 feet above sea level. The high altitude gives better sun exposures and temperature changes between night and day that help Ayanico develop full maturity, ripe fruit, and complex aromas. And what Raffaele is doing is uh, he's manually pulling away the leaves to give more sun exposure to the grape. Vuoi più esposta del sole quando taglia la foglia? Yes, it helps to mature the grapes faster. It's manual labor. You're not going to see this at a mass produced winery. All done by hand, all done out of passion. Other hidden secret can be found on the slopes. It's no accident that the best vineyards rest on slopes which allow the proper amount of water to drain away, forcing the vines to work harder to survive. This action of working harder results in higher quality grapes for making superior wines of quality. The quality of a wine begins in the vineyard indeed. The best Taurasi vineyards are found at the upper range of this altitude and are composed of volcanic soils. The volcanic soil is no surprise because of its location. Taurasi is nestled in the middle of three volcanoes in the region. Vesuvio to the west, Rocco Monfina to the northwest, and Vulture to the south. It was due to the volcanic soils that the phylloxera epidemic didn't reach Taurasi until decades after most of Europe had been devastated. Taurasi wines can only be made in this tiny red section in the Campania region. The regulations require both the vineyards and the winery to be located in this area, otherwise it would be technically illegal to put Taurasi DOCG on the wine labels. There are several Ayanico-based appellations surrounding Taurasi that are important to note here in this hierarchy. The Irpinia DOC is an Ayanico wine appellation that includes more than 20 townships, including Taurasi. 
the guidelines for this DOC require a minimum of 70% Ionico with no aging regulations as long as production and vinification occur in the province of Avellino, as you see here highlighted in yellow in the map. This is a great appellation to look for introductory Ionico wines. The next Ionico wine appellation in the hierarchy is the Campi Taurasini DOC. This Ionico wine appellation allows a much smaller territory as you can see in the highlighted orange area on the map. This is the only area where the vineyards and production can be located for this DOC. Campi Taurasini literally means Taurasi fields and the area is of historical importance with winemaking dating back to ancient Roman times. Of course, the township of Taurasi being the most important. The DOC requires a minimum of 85% Ionico and a minimum of nine months of aging before release. The smaller allowed territory gives life to a more distinguished wine compared to the Irpinian DOC. The difference between Campi Taurasini and the Taurasi DOCG is similar to the difference between a Rosso di Montalcino and Brunello di Montalcino DOCG from Tuscany. The main difference being longer aging requirements and an even smaller, more selective territory for Taurasi. It also allows wine enthusiasts the opportunity to experience a more affordable Taurasi with the Campi Taurasini being sort of like a weekend treat instead of a special occasion. The Antico Borgo Campi Taurasini DOC is made from the same vineyards they use to make the Taurasi wines, only that the aging and refinement phase is shorter. Important to note that the vineyards are in Taurasi proper and not from the surrounding communes. The wine is still age-worthy for decades. The flavor profile masterfully projects the complexity of a Taurasi wine with its big and bold structures, dark cherry fruits, spices, volcanic minerality, and impressively achieving world-class quality at a price most would consider to be valuable at just 4,000 bottles per year handcrafted. As we continue to move up the pyramid, the Taurasi DOCG requires three years of aging with a minimum of 12 months of aging in oak barrels during that period. The longer aging requirements and the even smaller Appalachian territory produces an accurate version of the Emperor's wine with the commune of Taurasi being the crew. And finally, the Taurasi Reserva DOCG requires four years of aging with a minimum of 18 months of aging in oak barrels during that period before it can be released to the public for consumption. The producer may decide to age their wines for a longer period before releasing them, but the minimum requirements are enforced by the regulations. It's common for the larger, more commercial wineries to release their Taurasi wines as soon as they've fulfilled those requirements in order to push sales more aggressively, while smaller, artisanal-style wineries will release their Taurasi wines after an even longer aging period when they feel the wine has reached an adequate threshold of refinement. The Antico Borgo estate produces only the Taurasi Reserva and not the normal Taurasi DOCG and typically releases it five to seven years after the harvest and only produces a micro batch of 3,000 bottles per year. This allows further refinement with time and perhaps more so than any other age-worthy wine in Italy, Taurasi wines arguably require the most aging to arrive at its peak drinking period. And while it's perfectly legal to use up to 15% of other red varietals from the Campania region for a Taurasi wine, the Antico Borgo estate in their Reserva uses 100% Ionico grapes for a more authentic presentation of the ancient varietal. Being so fascinated with the story of Taurasi, I decided to explore a wide range of 
wine producers and tasted over 70 different wines until I came across one that really stood out. That winery turned out to be Antico Borgo, so I decided to pay them a visit. I met the two owners of Antico Borgo, Baldo di Sesa and Raffaele Inglese. Baldo's family have owned Cru Vineyards in Taurasi proper for multiple generations, but they were unfortunately abandoned and Raffaele had been working as an enologist for some of the largest commercial wineries in Taurasi for over 40 years. When Raffaele was ready to retire, Baldo asked him if he'd like to make high quality artisanal wines from those crew vineyards that were just sitting there waiting for some attention. Raffaele agreed and they formed Antico Borgo, a small artisan winery that handcrafts only the finest Taurasi wines in extremely limited quantities. It's no accident their wines really stood out from all the other commercial Taurasi wines I had been tasting. Those commercial wines were either too earthy or they lacked other details. And some producers were trying to make Ionico wines in a way that was super fruity, just to chase what's fashionable in wine today. Most locals who are familiar with Ionico would claim that an overly fruity Ionico just simply would not be very authentic. What shocked me about the Antico Borgo Taurasi wines was that they seem to have a little bit of everything that makes Taurasi wines so great. And that is a very complex flavor profile of dark cherries, rose petals, spices, savory earth tones, and volcanic ash, all encapsulated in a full body with sophisticated power and a memorable finish. Tasting the Antico Borgo Taurasi wines is truly a time machine experience where you get to travel back in time to taste the best of the past. The Emperor's wine may come from a lost world, but the wine lives on for us to treasure. While Ayanico isn't a fashionable wine, it has had all the components of the world's finest wines long before wine was globally in fashion. Its ability to make complex wines without blending other grape varietals, its ability to age for decades in the bottle, and its long historical origins make it a fascinating tasting experience. The Ayanico wines of Taurasi were once only deserving of an emperor, but today you and I have that luxury. While the times have indeed changed, the unique character of Ayanico has remained intact so we can taste the past. Until next time, I'm Tony Margiata, and we'll meet again on the next episode of Italy's Best Kept Wine Secrets.